You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. This is James Morris. It's bright and early on a Tuesday morning. We had a little rain last night. I knew it was going to rain because my cat didn't go outside last night. Got ready to leave the shop, and when my cat won't go outside, normally we start closing the shop up, she scatters. We don't, we don't see her. <laughs> when 5 o'clock rolls around, she leaves. Well, yesterday we got ready to leave at 4.45. She's hanging around the shop. At 5 o'clock, we closed the doors down. She was still in the shop. My wife looked at me and said, it's going to rain. I said, you sure? She said, cat wouldn't leave. I said, so you trying to tell me we got a weather cat? Yep, we got a weather cat. So our weather cat <laughs> told us last night it was not it was going to rain. So yeah, I tell you what, they're better than a lot of the meteorologists around here. But I've got Larry Walters. Is he online, Anna Marie? All right, good. I didn't know he's calling this morning. I'm glad he is. He's on, from the Fair ta Tax. Larry, our uh, libertarian candidate, uh, Gary Johnson, has been talking a lot about the Fair Tax lately, uh, abolishing the IRS having a fair tax, which is a consumption tax. Uh, have you heard anything about this? I've not heard anything about uh, Gary being on, you know, more advoc uh, of an advocate over the last uh, few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I met him at the convention down mm -hmm. in uh, West Palm Beach, I guess it was, yes, uh, a couple months ago. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and uh, Gary has been a fair tax advocate, however, since the 2008 elections when he first ran as a Republican mm -hmm. candidate. And uh, didn't uh, got phased out in the per primary down there. Yeah. Well, well I'm glad. I, anyway, it just it makes me, it's refreshing because I'm seeing a lot of my Republican and Democrat friends that are going. You know, I just don't know what to do. And I said, What do you mean you don't know what to do? I can't vote for Hillary and I can't vote for Trump. And I said, You do have a third option. And they kind of look at me going, What? I, 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 we can't do that. And I said, Why can't you do that? That would send a very loud message to the powers to be in Washington that don't want the fair tax. It would be a good, it would send a loud message to Washington and to the Democrats and the Republicans that we're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. What is your viewpoint on that if we supported a third party candidate that supported the fair tax? Uh, do you well, if we, if we did that, if we did that, we would certainly lose the election to Hillary Clinton. Do you think that's what would happen? We'd lose, definitely. Okay. I say, yeah, absolutely. Because it's going to be, as it is right now, it is going to be too close otherwise. Mm. What I would suggest is that uh, we promote, and I do this, we promote as much as we can to people who uh, like the idea of the fair tax to see to it that Gary gets enough uh, recognition so that he is, we get, his, we get his poll numbers up over 15% so that they have to invite him to the pre, to the uh, to the debates. Oh, to the debates. To the, to the debates. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting debates that, and pre debates. That's confused. all right. Now, see, that's, thank you. That, that's and, that's and fine. if we can get him in the debates, then we can certainly, we will certainly get the uh, the level of the fair tax interest raised considerably. Right. You know, that's the reason I'm saying that is because for years and years and years, I've heard everybody talk about. You know, I can't vote third party because yet you know, if you vote for Hillary, vote for uh, for anybody else other than Hillary or Trump, it goes to the other candidate. And I'm kind of looking at him going, okay, so you don't believe there's room for a third party in here? And I go, no, we can't have a third party because the other person would get in. And I go, well, how are you ever going to send a message to the Republicans and the Democrats? Because the Democrats, just are, as we're seeing right now, are just as corrupt, if not more corrupt, than the Republicans during the convention. And we saw the Republicans, how corrupt they were during the 2012 convention with Ron Paul. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that realize that it's a corrupt system. And the only way we're going to change it is to send a loud message that, hey, we're not going to take this anymore. We're tired of this duopoly, the, the right-left paradigm that, you know, we got to vote for this person or that person. There's no other choice. And I think a lot of people, maybe not you, Larry, but a lot of people, including myself, are saying, well, we're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore and we're going to vote third party. And those that listen to my voice may agree with me or may disagree with me, but that's what makes America so great that we have the right to freedom of speech, right to freedom of assembly. And this is why I'm, I'm voting for someone that I think is not the lesser of three evils, but just not evil, period. Uh, that's what I've got. I've got right now. I think we got the lesser of two evils between the Republican and Democrats, and I just cannot bring myself to do it. Now, what do you think about that? Do you think that uh, that's the lesser of two evils to vote for Trump or Hillary, or how do you feel? Actually, I don't think Trump is as evil by any stretch of the imagination mm -hmm. as Hillary is. Okay. And 
Uh, I, I, what my hope is for Donald Trump is that he will bust up the cabal, which <laughs> is the establishment in both parties, by just doing things his way instead of the politically correct way. Now, we've got to admit, the politically correct uh, way, it seems like it's going to be, it seems like America is dying by death of a thousand cuts. You can't say this, you can't say that, you can't fly this flag, you can't fly that flag, you can't, <laughs> can't drive that type car or that type truck without, you know, without someone being upset that you're using too much uh, fuel or polluting too much. You know, heck, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm the epitome of uh, oxymorons. I drive an old 1994 Chevrolet pickup truck and a Toyota Prius. One gets 12 miles to a gallon, the other, one, <laughs> the, other one, the other one gets 50 miles to a gallon. And my, my friends look at me going, how can you drive a Prius? Well, it's the other choice is to get 12 miles to a gallon. That's, that's yeah. why I drive a Prius. But, there's got, yeah. that's, but there are differences out there. People think differently. And we've got to come up with some sort of, well, one of the biggest things is there, we've got to get together and change this tax system we got. I really think this, uh, this progressive tax we have is one of the planks of the Communist Manifesto that came out. I think you ever read um, the, uh, the Naked, I think it's a Naked American, came out in 1957. Uh, it, they talk about the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto. And about the, uh, one of them is uh, public schools for everybody, uh, from kindergarten yep. all the way up to high school, even into college, free schooling, uh, you know, the, and where the state takes care of the children. And at the same time, a progressive income tax. Those are just two of the planks uh, where, you know, you get taxed, the more successful you are, the more you pay. Uh, what someone said, tell me the other day, a fine is a, a, is, a, is a tax you pay if you did something wrong. And a tax is something you do when you do something that's good. Uh, <laughs> if you do really well, you get taxed more. So mm -hmm. it's a damned if you do, and it's damned if you don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you're right. And I carry a copy of the Ten Planks with me just as a reference well, for are, such occasions when the con conversation yeah. comes up. What is I can bring it up and say, look at this. Number two, step two, a uh, progressive, uh, uh, heavily progressive tax system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Uh, and and I let me get back. Let me get back to the third party for a moment, sure, yes. if I may, James. Please, please. This is what this I is think, for. I think there could be room for a third party, but it can't be initiated six months before every major election. The mm. the, the the third party, the Libertarian Party, would be the obvious solution. Has got to be doing something that is making headline news throughout the year. Well, well, you know, Larry, Jordan. Lincoln was a third party. Well, he was. Lincoln was a third party. So that took the place I, of the I'm going to disagree with Larry. I think that the third party's been there. Just some people are afraid to look at it. Well, it, it is like the elephant in the room right here, the 800-pound gorilla or elephant, what do you want to call it? But we've been around since 1971, and this is not our. we're going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. The third party will be. Uh, the Libertarian Party. I remember, uh, what was it, uh, Jeb Bush the other day said, I just can't vote for Trump. I ha I'm looking at Gary Johnson. I can't vote for Hillary. And what we're seeing is those people, you know, you have to vote, I, in, my, in my opinion, you have to vote principle over party. Uh, too many people are caught up in this right-left thing, and what we end up doing is staying divided and not trying to make what's best for our country. And I think getting the fair tax would be a wonderful thing to make this a great country, again, where everybody has skin in the game, where you pay, a, where, where you know, you pay as you go. I mean, think about this. I mean, if you go buy a loaf of bread and, uh, and you don't like that bread, you don't buy it. You go buy another loaf of bread. Well, that gives you a choice. You don't have to pay any tax on it. So you make your own bread instead. But if people have skin in the game and they actually realize that, hey, you know, I'm paying taxes of my own free volition. I'm going to pay this right over here. I know where it's going. And it goes to the states. Then the states send it to the federal government. That is what's that's, so, right. that's what's so neat about this. Instead of us sending money directly to the federal government and then the federal government trickling it down as they see fit to those that kowtow to what the government rules of regulation can't drive 55, uh, a 21-year-old drinking limit, and you know, all these different things the federal government puts on there instead of having the states being sovereign. This is what ends up happening now. The states become powerful and the federal government becomes less powerful. And I think that's what I think a lot of Americans would like to see is less centralized government. Uh, your viewpoint on that, sir? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. And I, I have to emphasize again that right now we have the best chance of getting the fair tax passed mm -hmm. and implemented 
than we have ever had. How's that? But because, because Congress is absolutely looking for a major change in the tax system. Mm. They are. But, they've, but because of Paul Ryan, they've released a, they've released, they've come together with and released a better tax plan. And it is a better tax plan, mm. James, but it is not as good as the fair tax. In fact, I've got a chart here that was developed by one of our advocates that has 57 points on where the fair tax is better than the tax plan that they are implementing. However, okay. or that they're proposing, not implementing. However, uh, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Kevin Brady, mm -hmm. has on multiple occasions stated that this is only a proposal and they want to hear from the public. Yeah, they, need, so, they need to hear from the public on this. So now is the time for, for the public to inundate the House Ways and Means Committee and, Ke and Kevin Brady with their desire for the fair tax and at least one or two reasons why the fair tax would be a better solution than what has been proposed. Well, give me one or two reasons. We don't have time for all 57, but what are one or two of the better reasons for having the fair tax compared well, to... Well, the fair tax is still be a lot simpler to compre uh, comprehend and to comply with. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. The fair tax would be the most fair across all income brackets. True, I like that. The fair tax would be the most visible tax bracket for all applications. Good point It would be there. the most neutral tax to uh, business impacts. So there's just a few of them. It eliminates the IRS. It's the only tax plan that not only eliminates the IRS in its entirety, but it's the only tax plan, a, any consumption plan would do that. It is the only tax plan that will tax the underground economy completely. It puts the, that economy out of business. You're so, absolutely right. You're absolutely right about that. The underground economy because even if you trade between, say you have someone that cuts your grass and you give them $50 cash money, that's great on that part. Maybe you didn't pay tax on that, but when that guy gets that $50 and he goes and buys a new lawnmower or goes and buys a new, uh, goes and buys anything, he's having to pay tax on it. Is that correct? That's exactly right. That's, exactly right. right. So, so I encourage your listeners and anybody that you get a chance to talk with, James, mm -hmm. To understand the compre and comprehend the difference between the fair tax and any form of income taxation. Yeah, a lot of people conf uh, confuse the fair tax with the flat tax. And I said that's apples and oranges. We're not talking the same thing. Flat it tax and, and fair tax are not the same thing. And they go, really? Not the same thing. Flat tax is where you get it. It's all the way across the board. Everybody pays. You fill out a form and everything. Where the, uh, where the fair tax is everybody pay. It's a consumption tax. Is, and, it is, and, and it's, and it's, and, and you got to remember that nobody will pay the fair tax until they have their, as a family unit, has spent more than the federal poverty level for the year. So, like, for example, if you're if you're a family of four, you have to spend thirty about thirty four thousand dollars. That's about the average mm -hmm. before you start paying any tax. So, your first thirty four thousand dollars. Is tax free because of the prebate. That's pretty good. A lot of people end up spending thirty-four thousand dollars just in taxes a year. Hey, Larry, I gotta go. We're up against clock. Thank you so much. Look forward to hearing from you next Tuesday morning again. You have a great time down in Orlando, and I'll talk to you next week, sir. James Otto Center, we fix it right. Get